Despite what you may have read or seen at the end of the movie, Sauron and his great eye live on. Just 25 light years from us, this incredible protoplanetary disk exists around a star called Fomalort. And there are even suggestions that planets could already occupy this solar system too. If any of them are Earth-like and not too hot or too cold, they could just be the perfect Middle Earth. Yeah, I'm sorry about that one. I'll try my best not to do that again. I won't say anything else about the dwarf star that orbits nearby, tugging Fomalhaut to and fro, though I will just mention that it's possible for the protoplanetary disk to contain many valuable precious metals. Okay, seriously, I, I am done now. There are loads of objects that have been given the nickname the Eye of Sauron to some degree or another, although admittedly, some of them fit the name better than others. I'm showing you some of them on screen now, and objects ranging from planetary nebula all the way to galaxies have acquired that nickname. The one I want to focus on though, because I think it looks the most like the red eye, is a picture of a star called Fomalhaut and it's, well, ring. You actually might have seen Fomalhaut with your own eyes, because it's one of the brightest stars in the night sky. It makes it to number 18 on that list. It's only about 25 light years from us, but 25 times brighter than our sun, and it's in the southern fish constellation Pisces or Strenus. The star also has two fainter friends, two other stars that are close enough by to be gravitationally bound together, making this a triple star system. In this image that resembles the lidless eye of Sauron, the black pupil isn't really part of the system. It's a result of something called a coronagraph on the Hubble telescope. It's a mask that deliberately blocks the star, hiding its incredibly bright light and making it easier for us to see and study the structure around it. It's just like using your thumb to block a light bulb so you can see something near that light. The black slit here is then the shadow of this mask and the spot in the middle is where the star actually is, but we can't see the star itself here. The ring though, and all of that glorious structure, that is all very real. The ring is actually brightest in infrared wavelengths of light. So there's the exciting prospect of an updated image of the eye, you know, whenever JWST gets around to it. We have older infrared images from the now defunct Herschel telescope and the ground-based ALMA, but imagine the resolution upgrade we could see from Webb. I don't even think Webb would need to use a coronagraph because the star itself is much fainter in infrared light compared to both UV and visible wavelengths, which JWST can't see. The ring itself is made of dust, gas and ice, and its asymmetrical shape may be due to the motion of the system through the interstellar medium of space, or it might even be due to the gravitational impact of the nearby stars. We aren't 100% sure on this yet. The disk is made up of all the leftover material from the formation of the star, making up the protoplanetary disk, a 40 billion kilometer wide ring that could be forming planets around that star, but more on that in a moment. The dust and ice tends to start to clump together due to static electricity. And then as it grows and grows, eventually gravity takes over and planets can form from the debris. The radiation from the star can also blow away leftover dust and gas, further revealing the planets that have already formed and eroding the ring outwards. This is the same process that our own solar system went through about four and a half billion years ago. So studying this much younger system can teach us valuable lessons about where we and our planet came from. In addition to radiation from the Fomalhaut star, we think the inner edge of the ring is suspiciously sharp and clean, and we used to be pretty sure that that's due to a young planet hoovering up matter and clearing its orbit, using its gravity to sculpt a nice, clearly defined ring. This suspected planet has two names, one much cooler than the other. The first is Fomalhaut b, a classic exoplanet name, just the name of the star it orbits followed by the letter b, because it's the first planet to be seen around the star. The other name is Dagon, publicly chosen but now official. It's named after a deity that was half man and half fish, fitting since it's in the Pisces constellation. The only issue with Dagon is we no longer actually think it's a planet. We now think this is a dust cloud with the coolest name in the galaxy. It's kind of embarrassing, right? We even had pictures from the Hubble Space Telescope that we thought showed the planet. Not just one picture, we imaged it over eight years or so, thinking we were seeing it orbit Fomalhaut. But really, it seems like we were just seeing a big dust cloud or something orbiting instead. 
you can see the brightness of the object does seem to change over time, suggesting that it's an expanding object, which is not something most planets do this quickly, at least not without some outside influence. So how else can we tell that this is not a planet? Well, the first clue was that ground-based telescopes couldn't see it. This doesn't rule out the existence of the planet, but it does limit its mass to be less than about three times Jupiter's mass. Maybe the dimming effect could be because the planet has a huge ring system and the angle we're seeing it at is changing over time. So it looks bright when we see it face on and dim when it's edge on. The issues get worse for this planet candidate, however, when the Spitzer Space Telescope also failed to see any infrared emission from the object, limiting it further to be less than one times Jupiter's mass. Additionally, it now looks like the object might be moving so fast that it would actually be on course to escape the star's gravitational grasp and leave that solar system altogether. Again, not something that's common with planets. However, like all good three-part stories, there could be a final twist, and there's been an even more recent claim that maybe it is a planet once again, albeit one with an absurdly elliptical orbit. So at this point, just enjoy the image of the sinister eye. I did a lot of reading about Fomalhaut B for this video, and the only thing that's very clear about it is that we really don't know if it's a planet or not. It was, then it wasn't, now maybe it's been revived. For now, we're calling it a zombie planet living in the eye of Sauron. Definitive, perhaps not, but still rock and roll enough for something so Tolkien. Thanks for watching team, leave any questions about this bizarre system you have down below and subscribe if you're new for loads more astro content, including all of the latest news about JWST and its awesome images. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye!